Hey, and welcome to a new episode of I Know Jax. I'm Joe Talentino, and I have a great show for you today. But before we start, I have a question for you. Did you eat? I hope you did, because I would not recommend watching I Know Jax on an empty stomach. I would even suggest getting a snack and a drink, kick off your shoes, let down your hair, and make yourself really comfortable, because today you're in for a treat. I'm starting something new this week too. We're gonna to be doing a trivia question and answer every week and I'll get back to that in a little bit. But first, we're going to visit one of the most popular food trucks here in town, Burn-In's Barbecue. Shane is preparing for the contest at the Dattle Pepper Festival and this year, I decided to follow him and find out what goes into making award-winning barbecue. I wanted to find out how to make award-winning barbecue, so I headed down to St. Augustine to meet with Shane, who was getting ready to prepare a Daddle Pepper-infused Carolina-injected whole hog. And then we want to move about every two inches because we've got about eight. You can see where I've injected already. Burn Ends Barbecue has won the People's Choice Award three years in a row at the Daddle Pepper Festival, and now Shane was hoping to get his fourth win. There's a lot of work that goes into prep. Luckily, Shane has help. This is Wayne. There's also a lot of technique and skill involved in this. Next is the rub. So what you got in that? Brown sugar and what else? Brown sugar, black pepper, garlic, onion, salt, cumin. Shane tells me that they run the smoker at 230 degrees. Now that's a lot of meat to carry. Got it. Look at that, boy. I think we're ready. Do it. Let's do it. It's about midnight. That's perfect timing. Shane lights the smoker. The hog is now going to slowly smoke and will be ready first thing in the morning. Now I went home and slept in my own bed, but Shane and Wayne stayed on site all night to watch over the smoker. The Dattle Pepper Festival is an annual festival taking place at the St. John's Agricultural Center every October. Here you can find all kinds of vendors, Dattle Pepper sauces, Dattle Pepper plants, and even Dattle Pepper t-shirts. Basically, there's everything Dattle Pepper you can imagine. And then there's, of course, the very popular cook-off competition. Tell me how you got started in all this barbecue mess. In my backyard, cooking for friends, Joe. Um, I'm a people person. I hadn't noticed this about you. No, not at all. So I like to entertain, okay. and I like to show off my skill when it's right. Um, so the wife actually bought me a smoker for my birthday. Man, if I could go back and get the money that I had to waste it <laughs> on trial and error, we'd be millionaires. But through it all, 14 years later, here we are with Burnham's Barbecue. We've been in the truck, give or take, about 20 months. Um, we started off slow, doing weekend events, night events, and uh, finally I just said, you know what, this is my calling, we gotta go. So tell me a little bit about what you're making today. Well, today we did a uh, Dattle Carolina Injected Whole Hog, um, our famous Crack Mac, but we infused it with daddle pepper. Um, what goes best with barbecue? Beer. I agree. <laughs> um, if we didn't have beer, what would be your next option? Sweet tea. Not just sweet tea, daddle sweet tea. And it has that nice little slow burn on the back end, baby. It does, it's sweet, and then it's got a subtle burn, and it's gone in about 15, 18 seconds until you drink it again. And what are your predictions for today? We have you haven't opened up the lines yet, so you know. It's, go ahead, put your foot in your mouth. I want to. I got to get this on camera. I'm going in to win. There, there's a lot of love that goes into this. Everything we do is house made. Even our sides, our our sauces, Joe. Even the the injections that you saw last night. I make all of those. Right. Our mustard, our daddle sweet, our sweet Carolina, all house made. It's a win-win situation, really, when you're putting out a good product. The food truck is the way to go. I love it. I love it. So, um, 
Can we look forward to you being one of those food trucks that transitions to the other side, so to speak? Well, let's, let's not get this twisted. The food truck can never go anywhere. <laughs> uh, we are actually working on going brick and mortar the first of the year. Um, I can't tell you when. We're still in the makings of it, but the food truck will still stay on the road. While Shane and his team served up barbecue, I went to see what else there was to taste at the Battle Pepper Festival. And finally, it was time to find out if Shane and his crew was going to win for the fourth year in a row. Burn ins barbecue, and if you don't smell smoke, it's a joke. Now, maybe you picked up a few pointers too that you can use barbecuing for your friends and family next time. It is October, and Oktoberfests are everywhere, but October doesn't have to be all about beer because wine works just fine. Most of my friends are really into pumpkin, and I actually read recently that there's a pumpkin spray. You can spray it on pumpkin spice onto anything, even broccoli. <laughs> anyway, pumpkin's not my favorite fall flavor. I'm more into apples and cinnamon and brown sugar and all that stuff. Now, I got together with Chris Chislett to talk about how you can pair wine with fall flavors. Today I'm with my buddy Chris Chislett, the wine guy, and we're gonna talk about something pretty cool because in October, mm -hmm. beer takes over. It does, unfortunately. And everybody, ta and, and that's all they can talk it's about. The whole Oktoberfest thing, but guess yeah. guess what? There's German wine too, right? Did you even know that there was German wine? Honestly, I, when I think wine, I think France or <laughs> well, yeah. California. France. 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 Right? Not I France. France. Not France, yeah. I don't speak French. <laughs> I like it. I uh, So I brought a German Riesling because we've got all these wonderful schnitzels and bratwursts and this hanging things. This is Jaeger, Jaeger and schnitzel, bratwurst, and a pretzel from the German schnitzel house on Atlantic Boulevard brought over here specifically by Chef Cool Steve. place you've been it, there, right? Really nice place. Uh, so I brought this um, this German Riesling. It's um, it's a little bit of a, uh, it's a drier style, right? So Germany actually produces a lot of wine, uh, but it is kind of colder. There, you know, so, so it's not the same type of grapes? Maybe? Yeah, to, uh, I mean not totally different grapes, like Riesling is one of the main grapes, this is a, a Riesling, and they don't grow a lot of red, like red grapes it's too cold, okay. so the grapes are... Um, so you like, known more for white wines? Yeah, yeah, like you don't see Cabernet or Merlot or okay. Shiraz, Syrah, any of those, because uh, the skins are too thick, okay. so there's not enough sunlight, the grapes gotcha. can't ripen, so Riesling, Gewürztraminer, like all, um, even is like a tight? little bit, there you go. <laughs> Uh, Pinot Noir in the reds, because okay. it's got a thin skin, gotcha. so the grapes ripen. And, okay. and yeah, so this is a um, good thing about German, I mean, not really a good thing, depending on how you see it. German <laughs> wines tend to have um, a little bit of a lower alcohol, which is kind of a That's bad thing. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. But for pairing <laughs> with food, oh, um, it's, a, it's, a it's actually thing. a really good thing if oh. you're trying to pair with uh, with spicier foods, right? Because um, they don't, it doesn't overpower oh, gotcha. um, the food. And so sometimes it goes with more different. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's why sometimes beer is better with like spicier foods because right. it's you know something so hot. But this is, um, I brought this specifically with these dishes because um, you know we've got um, what's this the, the schnitzel right? Jaeger schnitzel the Jaeger schnitzel. Yeah. There you go. You say it better than I do. Is um, it's that's got a, one thing I say better than you do. <laughs> It's, it's fried, so it's got a little bit of grease to it. Hopefully this wine's going to uh, kind of cut through and cut through it a little bit, which we're not going to be eating this on camera, but I'll be eating it off camera. Oh, yeah. Mm. First thing you notice, it's, um, it's if you've ever had a Riesling before, it's nowhere near as, as, dry, uh, as sweet as right. 
some other beer. Everyone thinks Riesling, they think sweet. Yeah. Um, the one thing, uh, well, I probably have to do a, a close up of this. There's a, a little term on the front there. Um, fine herb. I'm probably. Fine herb. Fine herb. I'm, oh, it's probably just like fine herb. You've got to say it kind of angry yeah, in you German. Yeah, you've got to be mad. Yeah. yeah. It, that means, just means off dry. It's F I F E I N H E R B. Uh, it's a German word for like off dry. So, so not quite dry, not quite. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's got, you know, it's really more on the Man, dry side than it is sweet. they're all about the middle, aren't they? They are, <laughs> you know, it's that balance. But, balance. Um, so this is subtle, really minerally, like peach, pear, like green mm. apple, uh, no oak. No. So it's almost skewing more towards like a Pinot Grigio. Mm. Not very buttery. Kind either. of style. No, definitely not. No. Um, so it's um, you know definitely lighter, really good for food pairing. Very good. Um, and that's typically how wines from the Mosul, the region, okay. this is, you know the river Mosul um, from this region are They're typically lighter and cool. really food friendly. So, so there you have it. In Germany, it's not all about beer. They got wines as well. Yeah. We'll see you guys on the next wine guy segment. My wife is stressing me out. I know she does that pretty often, but. The other day she informed me there are only 12 more shows left till the end of the year. And then she proceeded to plan for what we should do for Christmas break this year. I was like, no, hold your horses. It's not even Halloween yet for crying out loud. Let's not go ahead and get ahead of ourselves. Let me enjoy the peace and quiet of October. Before we start talking about Thanksgiving, Black Friday and Christmas shopping, please. <laughs> we have plenty of time, don't we? Now, before the break, I started talking about Christmas, but really, I want to talk about football season and tailgating. That's what I wanted to talk about. I started out with a great barbecue, but then I went a little off track, and now it's time to bring it all back in. I love grilling out, and I love tailgating, so it's not surprising that every now and then, I get a hankering for a really good gourmet burger. Today, I'm at Epic Burger at the corner of Atlantic and Gervin Road. And I was told they got some really cool burgers. Let's go check them out. I've always wanted to open my own restaurant. That's been my goal since I went to culinary school. So uh, I wanted to start with burgers. I love burgers. Uh, I wanted to do something different, uh, right. not do simple burgers. I think that's kind of been done already. So I wanted to a kind of go all over. out. <laughs> yeah, a few times over. I wanted to go all out and do everything right. that I thought would taste good. And, put together what I thought made the perfect burger. Uh, for me here, it's going to be the Epic Burger. It's right. our version of bacon cheeseburger. Right. Um, start with the brioche bun. I don't like it when the buns, you eat the burger and it mushes down to nothing. <laughs> um, we have pancetta, just for something different as opposed to bacon, right. cornichons, uh, balsamic mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, red onions on it. We wrap all ours in uh, paper, just kind of old fashioned. But uh, it gives old a, school. Old school. With a name right on top, so we know what it is. So we know what it is. It gives the customer a plate kind of built in. Hawaiian Locals Burger doesn't really get a lot of vegetables. Uh, all it gets <laughs> is some green onion. A little green onion there. Just for a little bite. So she's got a steakhouse. This one is uh, going to be one of our more unique burgers. Okay. It's a steakhouse burger. So we've got our restaurant burger patty. Right. We've got caramelized onions. Okay. Now we're going to do something that I don't think I've seen on a hamburger before. We break up some maitre d' butter. Oh, nice. So maitre d' parsley butter, and parsley, and some Worcestershire sauce, some lemon juice, some garlic. I what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know food. that one. <laughs> and that's obviously, we call it a steakhouse burger just because <laughs> I like to be fancy, corny. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and... Um, we're very familiar with corny on our show, so yeah. go for it. <laughs> so we meet that. And Cornishon again, we get again. to Cornichons. Basically any burger that I've been trying to be a little bit, I guess, fancier with is going to get the corner shines. Cool. And I think they work. I really enjoy them. Extra little. And that's a simple burger. What I didn't try and do in this restaurant was make everything massive, large, right. huge, over the top right. portions. Because although it looks cool, it doesn't really do anything taste-wise um, most of the time. You can order several if you really want to go yeah. crazy. So when you close it up and wrap it up, by the time the customer gets it, it's, it's all melted. It's in. all melted in there. Nice. Again, that's one of my favorite burgers. And that's called a steakhouse burger. Steakhouse burger. Lay oh. steakhouse. Lay burger. steakhouse. Don't forget burger. the lay. Gotta have the lay in there. <laughs> so tell me, what's in the vegan burger? Well, we make our own guacamole here from scratch. Okay. Oh, See, nice. nice fresh guacamole, so lettuce. Got, and the guac looks like it's got red onions and 
all kinds of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, we got everything loaded up in that guac. And then the burger itself is made out, is that black bean or? Black bean, we got chickpeas, a little pepper, a little onions. Here, spices. We make these here a couple times a week at least. Awesome. It's Hawaiian local, so all we're missing is some Spam. And it's got a egg on it. Yeah, we got a fried piece of fam, Spam, it's got soy sauce on it, green onions. And now the egg, this one is fried with the yolk broken. Okay. Uh, but we let customers order it, which my favorite way, like over easy. Yeah. So the yolk runny. breaks and yeah, runs. Yeah. It's like having a sauce on the yeah, burger. Yeah, of course. For the Vietnamese chicken burger, Corey added spicy mayo on the bun and pickled vegetables. And now it's time to kick it up a notch. Fresh jalapenos, not out of a bottle, so there's plenty of spice. And then nice uh, piece of fresh cilantro sitting across the top of it. Close it up. And well, that's if you, our... If you need somebody to work on weekends, <laughs> I, I know, at least I know all the ingredients. You will know it. <laughs> Chef Corey hooked me up. We have all the burgers that we fried before. We have the Hawaiian, the Steakhouse, the Vegan, the Epic, and the Vietnamese Chicken, which is the one I'm going to try eating. And we have Parmesan truffle fries and beer batter gluten-free onion rings. And last but not least, we got dessert, which is, they call this the Elvis, which is a banana, peanut butter, and bacon. You heard it right, peanut butter, bacon, and banana. And then a chocolate-covered strawberry shake, which is strawberry shake with chocolate on the outside. Pretty cool. That is good. You just can't go wrong with great burgers or great barbecue. Throw in some great local craft beer and you have, well, a party. <laughs> this week I'm starting something new in the show. We're going to start doing trivia questions and this is how it's going to work. My friends at Trivia Nation are going to ask a question and after a short commercial break, we'll give you the answer so it's time to listen up. Hey, this is Steve with Trivia Nation. It's time to get your think on. Our question today is, what is Steve Carell's highest rated film on Rotten Tomatoes with a 91% rating? Again, what is Steve Carell's top rated film on Rotten Tomatoes with a 91% rating? Good luck. I'm Donna Deegan, CEO, Chief Eternal Optimist of 26.2 with Donna, and I hope you'll watch I Know Jack. Here at I Know Jacks, we do our best to support local businesses in the community. Visit our website to find out how we can help promote your business on iknowjacks.com. Call Joe directly at 904-345-0755 or visit iknowjacks.com slash advertising. Hey, this is Steve with Trivia Nation. It's time to get your think on. We asked you, what was Steve Carell's highest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes with a 91% rating? That was Little Miss Sunshine in 2006. Did you get it? I didn't. I'm really good at some trivia, but there are a lot of categories I know nothing about, like country music, baseball, or the TV show Friends. Don't worry if you didn't get it this time. You'll get a new chance next week. Celebrate the Jacksonville Farmer's Market at Moon Over the Market on November 9th at 6 p.m. Under sparkling lights with live music, unlimited cocktails from Island Oasis, beer from Engine 15, tastes of local food, and a student culinary competition too. Brought to you by Gastro Jacks and the Northeast Florida chapter of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. with a new episode of I Know Jax. But before then, I'll see you on the internet.